Welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer, and joining me are two people who literally wrestled with demons today. It's Megan Hoffmeyer and Adam Hodgins. Did we mean the, the spiritual or the... the... Either, either or. Because, I mean, I could go for both. Yeah, I mean, you guys were literally... So we had to, you had to clear your house out, right, Adam, of demons for this podcast, and you were literally wrestling with them wrestling with them and then actually normally i would log onto my computer to do this to do this like uh this podcast with you but today i just strapped myself into a chair put my feet <laughs> in water and then my wife smashed a light bulb lamp onto the ground and somehow i'm, I'm hooked in here with you guys so we'll see how long this connection lasts <laughs> are you holding the flurkin i'm holding the flurkin <laughs> <laughs> now i gotta say to you th today was one of the best days of my life so i okay. uh i got home today and this this bug crab demon attacked me, right? And we're having a great fist fight in the front yard. I didn't have that screeching beetle. And I am just swinging away at this thing. I mean, our neighbors are watching. People have chairs. There's Someone's people. Someone's going to file there's a like, complaint. There's like 50 people uh, just sitting around watching this fight. We're both exhausted, right? Yeah, yeah. I finally land the knockout punch. The thing explodes on a, a bunch of peaches, pieces. And I see this little demon crab coming towards me. And I get to reenact my favorite scene from Constantine. Constantine and... I kicked this crab a good 40 yards, and it landed into my neighbor's pool. Oh, yeah. Greatest day of my life. That You can't get better than that. And then I came inside, and there was a spider, and I put the spider underneath a glass. <laughs> I don't own cigarettes, so I ran to the store real quick. I made sure the spider had air. I took a couple puffs of the cigarette, and I blew it into the glass cup, and I said, Welcome to my life. And then Megan got I, mad at me because I'm smoking inside. I shouldn't be smoking inside, but I had to. All that demon grow on the lawn, I swear. The Homeowners <laughs> Association is going to send us a complaint. I smushed a lot of stuff in our yard. They're very strict yeah, about it, that stuff. But it's all natural, right? Like, this is, like, bug guts are just, even though demon bug guts are just, it's like, it's, that's a, it's not like you're putting oil or toxic waste out there. That's I mean, just, that's just yeah. nature. Shoot, we're not even allowed to have a, post a plastic pot out front, only ceramic. Yeah, so I, they've I, got strict visual guidelines I have a here. dead bug demon on my yard uh, but I don't have to buy have fertilizer like, so that's good do you guys have like like council meetings to tell you which kind of pots you can use okay so they have council meetings I can't say that we go yeah we went to one and, and it ended up with me wrestling another demon and uh, I gotta say guys true story uh, we covered this on the Lady Live pod but when I lived in Korea Megan and Adam I just want to tell you guys something I used to be a young man full of hubris okay. and I was having a conversation with my friends and I, I meant this. I meant this when I said it. I said, if there's a ghost, I could punch it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you and, named your cat ghost? Yep. No. Oh. Because that no, we named him. We named him, he, we named him after a Game of Thrones ghost because he's a big. <laughs> he's a big white boy. He's a flurkin. Don't no. you named him? You named after after Patrick Swayze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he can just hold him yeah. and pet him and sing. Make to pottery. Him. Yeah. Oh, we well, ghosts and I do make pottery. Yeah, he stamps uh, yeah, okay. it with his little paw. Yeah, it's adorable. But yeah, <laughs> I thought I could beat up a ghost. I didn't. Wow. I, I just said, "Hey, if there's one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sock him. I'm gonna hit him like that sand creature hit Swayze in what's the movie we covered? Iron Dawn, Steel Dawn, Steel Dawn. What a, what a Steel great Dawn. comeback. Well, that's a great recall, isn't it? You like just pulling. I love it. I'm just, you know. Just makes me happy, and it gets my mind off the fact that I have to go clean up demon bugs off my lawn tonight. So, I, I, to, to, to get off the demon subject for a second, because I'm very <laughs> intrigued by, like, the, the, like, council meetings for your your home decor. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen, I, have you seen almost, the movie Battle Royale? Yeah. It's like that. I almost want you guys to go, and, like, I want to issue a challenge to you mm -hmm. to see how long you can hold it together – and just be like, I just like to address the floor. Has anybody else spotted the Sasquatch at night? And just like <laughs> make fake Sasquatch sightings and just like start that rumor. Cause you know, someone there is going to be like, yeah, me too. Like someone's <laughs> going to dive in and just like, this sounds like a lot of fun and just see what, what you can do. I saw it too. Oh man, I would pay you to do that. I would do it super and earnestly. And I'm married to you, so it's my <laughs> money. It doesn't matter. But just to annoy the president, see if it would just fry her. I'm super earnest, and so I could stand up there and just say, "Listen, uh, you guys know me. I've lived here for a while. My lawn looks great, except for the dead demon bug. Uh, 
I take care of my lawn, I, I get all the permits, I do all this, but guys, has no one else seen the Sasquatch? You almost want to do it like three months of preemptive support. So like somebody trampled my flower garden. Yep. <laughs> build the case. You know, build the right, straw build man. The case for it. There's something then, like, in my backyard drinking from my hose. Yeah. And like <gasps> actually it chewed through my hose. Yeah, it chewed through my hose. And show Which pictures. Really, that's Mark Mark and the Bigfoot would be the name of this movie. <laughs> I the big fictitious. It's like rear window. Yes. Should, I, should I break my leg? You know what? That would be a little bit too on the nose. Yeah, I'm just also, bru- just... I'd have to deal with that, and I'm just, I'm not a fan. Just and, and your bedroom is on the second oh, floor. Ooh. Let's not forget that. Meg, oh man, I don't want to bruise ribs again. Those are terrible. I mean, yeah, but at least you can walk. Yeah, I'm more for the ribs than the leg. Because yeah. how would you go to bed? Well, you guys, you guys are talking about hurting my ribs. <laughs> All right, you well, know what? Okay. I, wait, I have a bad back. There you go. It just throw a disc. Just throw it out. There it is. All right, let's do that. Because it's already happening. I don't want to add bruised ribs to a bad back. Because if I broke my ribs, I would hurt my back. Because my back hurts when I sneeze. Right. That's your Achilles heel is your back. So I pop a disc, and I just sit by the – the. I lay on a on a gurney by the window, just staring out, looking for a Yeti. Let's make it. Let's, ha- let's do it. I'll write this audio drama. It'll be like Orson Welles, War of the Worlds. You and Ghost could be <laughs> side by side. His little cat bed that looks out the window. You sitting next to him. Yep, I right. like well, it. Well, Ghost, Ghost is what notices that at night he's like caterwauling and he won't stop. <clears throat> yep. What's wrong with this cat? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And then it's Yeti. It's Yeti. I like that's what it. What happens? It does this mess with the- our, our our backyard flower pots. Get tore up pretty good. Yeah, and the chipmunks this- have disappeared. <gasps> Don't talk of the chippies. <laughs> Are you guys missing chipmunks? Yeah, well, we had a hawk fly into my window the other day. Oh, that's so sweet. I think it's gunning after the chippies. I saw a hawk dive into the the leaves out there. I think it got a mouse, though. Yeah, we got hawks in our backyard. So we had hawks when I, like, at our last house we lived at, we had this, like, we had bird feeders all over, our, or we had a huge, huge lot. And you would see squirrels come and, like, eat the bird seed. And then I saw a red tail hawk swoop down and take a squirrel from the bird feeder and i was like i guess that's the most effective bird feeder in the world <laughs> yeah i mean like, if you have real food and it brings other food to it yeah it's it's all all birds are welcome at this feeder just it's a patience game i love it <laughs> see i need to throw a disc out and just watch my bird feeders yeah <laughs> we, we had a lot of we had a lot of wild animals there the worst was we had a snapping turtle on our deck what? Yeah, we had this like, huge, out of nowhere, my buddy was over, he's like, how long have you had that turtle? And there's just this, like, <laughs> massive snapping turtle. And so I was like, because cartoons would never lie to me, I was like, oh, turtles are slow and dumb. So I went to go pick it up, and this turtle, like, hissed and spun and, like, almost my fingers off. So I was like, I, I can't. I, so I called, like, the Humane Society, like, animal controls, like, hey, there's this, like, large snapping turtle on my deck. And th- what the guy said to me was, yeah, we don't deal with those because they bite. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, well, that's why I'm calling you is because they bite. And he says, well, if you grab the, the back end of his shell, he shouldn't be able to get to you. And I was like, well, he won't get to me because I'm not doing that. That's not something I'm going to do. So we looked online, and apparently if they bite a stick, they won't let go. So I took a hockey stick because we live in Canada, and he bit the hockey stick, and then we like lifted him into a, a Rubbermaid bucket. And then I tried to carry the bucket to the creek, the and creek down the road. through the bottom of it? Wow. No, can... but it was, it was a translucent bucket, and it kept snapping, but like right at my crotch. <laughs> and I knew there was rubber made in between us, but it was the most unnerved. I had to put I couldn't do it. My wife had to do it. I had videos of my wife taking the turtle to free it because I, I couldn't get over that psychological vision. Do you think snapping turtles and slobs are working together? No, because we're not overruled yet. If they're working together, there'd be no choice. Yeah, it'd be done. It'd be like Thanos getting the gauntlet. Exactly. A, a, a Just... sloth puts a snapping turtle on its arm. Right. So we've almost <laughs> talked about everything except Constantine so far. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I'm going to do it, guys. So I caught, I, I did a documentary in college about catching pythons, and this guy was telling me a story about how he, so he was, we, we learned how to oh, catch pythons with these firefighters. This is not a yeah. Bit. And uh, so, 
I learned how, so I, they were teaching us how to catch pythons. So I learned, you know, they they put you in a situation. You go grab the python's neck. You can actually snap its neck because it's not very strong. So you just go up, pick it up. It poops all over the place. You carry it away. You just don't want to aim it towards you because it'll squirt you. Right. Uh, so he has this this anaconda. You know the story, Meg. And right, this guy has a, this guy has this anaconda, and he was doing a training session where. He's, he has his anaconda, and while he's talking about the anaconda being a jerk, the anaconda somehow got out of its cage and bit his hand. Oh. So he's teaching people how to catch snakes, right? And then he's talking about an anaconda being a jerk, a green anaconda. The anaconda gets out of its cage and bites him while he's saying anacondas are jerks. This so- is real. Like He has these videos on YouTube from this <laughs> documentary. It's not even a bit. I'm not corroborating I'll, this for him. I went he's hunting in the woods so- for pythons. Was the guy whose job it was to handle these snakes... A billionaire. No, he worked for the <laughs> state government. Yep. Because that's that's the only amount of money that I would need to get paid to handle snakes. Yeah, he he goes around training because the pythons in Miami are are some are an issue. So they train Perfect. firefighters, and they so you oh. know, I went on a massive uh, airboat hunt. We like two, maybe fifteen airboats went out to hunt for pythons, and it was filmed on the news. Every news broadcaster and we filmed it and. They caught one tiny dying python. <laughs> so it's, yeah, they, they, I don't know how big it is. I guess it's an issue out there, but when we went and did this big hunt, we just found one tiny little thing. Well, the Everglades are. Yeah, it's a big place. A but yeah, big. but I, mean, I guess snapping turtles, pythons, anacondas. Well, I, I had to tell that I th- story. I think animals just know when people are hunting them and when they're hunting people. Good call. So like we, my dad is an avid hunter, and then I'm also his son, so sometimes I go along with him. But, like, during turkey season, it's yeah. incredibly hard to hunt tur- Like, turkeys are the only animal in Canada you need to take a separate course to learn how to hunt. Oh, wow. Yeah, because it's like turkeys can see all the colors, so you need to be in full camouflage, and they're, like, very crafty, so you don't- it's, like, very specific how to hunt a turkey. <laughs> I just picture going, gobble, 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 like, like, like rolling. No, and- <laughs> they are... They are savages, and they also have huge spurs on their on their feet, and they can attack you. Like they're very aggressive if they attack you. Um, so you're saying so, sloths would ride turkeys into battle? 100. percent So, but we'll be sitting out in the field, like all camouflaged up, waiting, and there's like a turkey like a hundred yards away, and you'll like go, like you'll sniff, and the turkey like turn and run. But then the turkey season's like three weeks long. When that's done, turkeys will come out in front of you, and they'll like block. <laughs> Car and they won't like there's no fear when it's not hunting season but when it's hunting season they're like the most skittish wise it's, it's incredible it's a plot I oh yeah it. the turkeys in my parents neighborhood are nuts my the, dad had a chrome bumper on his pickup truck and this turkey stared at itself for a good 20 minutes and would peck its reflection <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely wildlife with movies sold in flicks <laughs> Right. That's been Constantine. Thanks yep. for tuning in. So I, I was watching this movie, and I, I listened to both the commentaries. There's one with Akiva Goldsman and Francis Lawrence, and then there's one with the writers. Uh, let's see. The writers are Kevin Broadbin and Frank Capello, who wrote Suburban Commando and Mine Hunters, mind you. Ooh. Oh, the Netflix show? No, Mine Hunters with LL Cool J, oh. directed by Ronnie Harlan, and um, Glimmer Man. They kept calling it Constantine. So let's get this out of the way. We know that it should be Constantine, but we're going to call it Constantine. <laughs> yes, please don't yeah, call it Constantine. Exactly. Okay, so we know it's Constantine, but I've been saying this since 2005. But who decided that? It came from a graphic novel, and no one tells you how to pronounce a graphic novel. That's a good well, point. Well, I think, I think Alan Moore, like I called him earlier today, and I was like, <laughs> Alan, how do you uh, how do you say this this guy's name? And he's like, well... Swamp Thing. He talked to me about Swamp Thing for half an hour and then just hung up because he wouldn't give me the answer. Um, but I think Constantine is how you, like, if you type it into, um, like, this voice to speech on Siri, she says Constantine. Hmm. And Siri can't be wrong. No. No. She, she's not useful, but she's not wrong. <laughs> hey, hey, our bases are covered, though, right? Exactly. I love Do it. you want to know what was very, like, a moment for me? When we yeah. get ready for this pod, let's hear it. Because I have this, I have the same DVD with both commentaries on it. 